Good morning and welcome to Bethany Free Lutheran Church. Our call to worship this morning is Psalm 84, verses 1, 2, and 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Would you please stand with us this morning? Come and behold him, 
Father, we do worship you, we do praise you, we thank you, God, for who you are, holy and righteous, and perfect, and beautiful and good. We pray, Lord, you'd bless this worship time of you now. Just keep our eyes and ears and hearts drawn to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. come before our Lord in a silent confession of our sin. Heavenly Father, bring to our attention the very things which we need to confess before you. In Jesus' name, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners will be converted unto thee. Forgive us according to your goodness and grace. Through the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here these good words from Colossians chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. <clears throat> when, you were dead, let's see, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made us alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross." Amen. I invite you to stand. Let's profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's found on page 105 in your hymnals or up on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for these tithes, these gifts, these offerings. Thank you for our very lives. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would use these tithes and gifts and offerings to your glory, that you would multiply them so that your word will be proclaimed locally in Richland County and also in our state and nation and world. Lord, we pray that your word will be put into the words of people who don't have your word yet. And we just pray, Father, that people will come to faith. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Some announcements for you. Uh, today, uh, there's no Sunday school, but everyone is invited to come downstairs to, for a, uh, a brunch. Please come and uh, enjoy your time. Even if you didn't bring any food, come. Enjoy. I'm sure there'll be plenty. And also, uh, we have uh, WMF at Dina's on Tuesday. Heads up to that. Women's Missionary Federation. Everybody's invited to go to that. All the women. And uh, let's see. Also, uh, next Sunday, of course, we're having Pastor Andrew Olson here. He's from a new ministry called They Need the Bible. And he is going to share with us about, uh, he's going to preach, but also he's going to share with us, maybe some during the service, I think, but especially afterwards. It's really amazing how their goal is to get the Word of God, uh, the John 3.16, into uh, every language in the world. Uh, and so there's like 1,500, you know, it seems like a long ways to go. And, but this is just John 3.16, and in one year they already got 77 done. Now people who never had the Word of God in their language now have at least John 3.16, one of the most important verses in the Bible. So there'll be a special offering taken at the, received at the very end of the service, so just attention to that if you uh, um, want to give to that ministry. Um, I know it takes about $700 to get one language, uh, scripture, into that language. So it's a long process. He'll explain to you how it works and how it's verified and checked. It's really kind of cool. They're very good at it. So more on that next time. So just a heads up, Pastor Andrew Olson, and he does extend his greetings. He sent me a text this morning and said, be sure to greet you. So greet you in the Lord. So greetings in the Lord. God bless you. All right. After that, uh, later on, on the, let's see, on the 27th, it says the 27th here, and I take it that's, what, a Friday? Friday night, 27th, 28th, 28th? That is for the Richland uh, Ludifisk Supper. I wonder if they have that right. Is that correct? Does anybody know? 27th, all right. Very good. It seems like I thought one year was like on a Sunday, but uh, Friday. All right, and uh, you can see the rest of the announcements there. Do you have any announcements to make? Oh. Tom very humbly announced brunch. He didn't make the whole announcement. It's uh, October, Pastor Appreciation Month, and the brunch is in honor of him and Sandy. And we appreciate you so much, and you know, not just one Sunday a year, but I encourage you, if you're not doing so, be praying for our shepherd and his wife, always, because um, the devil is hard at work trying to discourage. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a profession that is losing more people than ministerial profession. Pastors are leaving their jobs and droves, and it's, it's discouraging times, but we want to encourage you, Tom. We want to thank you, Sandy, for your service. I want to read, read a couple of verses from 1 Peter 5. To the elders among you, I appeal as fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings, and the one who will also share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. And I think these are fitting verses for you and your commitment to serving us, serving the Lord. And just a quick word picture. Who knows back, well, I suppose they still make sailboats, but back when they used to make a lot of sailboats, where did they choose a tree to make the mast? 
Who knows? What, Austin? Nope, not the center of the forest, quite the opposite. The edge of the forest, because the strong winds and the storms batter the edge of the, uh, the, edge of the forest, and those trees are so much stronger. It's like, okay, how's that story tie in? Pastor Tom has a sailboat, and his mast is actually made out of aluminum. But it went through a storm. He forgot to take the mast down as he pulled it out of the lake one day and hit a tree, right? Way up there and bent the mast. And I volunteered to straighten it. It's extruded aluminum. I thought, how tough can that be? Um, Ron, were you the one that came over and helped me? Yeah. Finally had to drive a tractor over it between two blocks before it finally surrendered and got mostly straight, not perfectly straight, <laughs> but it's usable again. And there's not many trees that are chosen to be the mast. There's not many people that are chosen to be the shepherd of a flock because God chooses men and women who have the strength and the backbone to take a lot of storms, to take a lot of discouragement. And so, once again, we thank you for your faithful service to God's word and to us. And so, hopefully you're able to join us for the brunch afterwards. And not just today, but whenever you feel the need or the feel it in your heart, give them a card of encouragement, a card of thanks. So, thank you, Tom. That's very kind, thank you. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um, other announcements? Okay. And you know, I, I guess I didn't know you drove a tractor over it. I didn't know that. <laughs> but I know that you and Ron got it straight, though. And that, you know, it's funny. It's kind of like a word picture is like we all have a mast, in a sense, and we have stays on the side of it to hold us up, the Lord to hold us up. And... Uh, we are imperfect. We are imperfect, but we can still work for the Lord, right? Even though there's a little, sometimes a tightness and a little spot to get that sail up, it still goes up. <laughs> so, thanks. No, any other announcements? All right. Very good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for your grace in our lives and your blessing. And um, We have imperfect lives, but we are thankful, God, for your grace and for the model and example you set for us. We thank you for the love that you have for us, God, and uh, we thank you for Jesus. And Father, uh, we, we think of, I thank you for Thomas Sanders' uh, message that he shared last uh, week on Sunday uh, during Sunday school for his sharing about his trip uh, on the Indian reservations. We just thank you for those experiences and thank you for their efforts as a team from the school. And uh, we just pray uh, encouragement uh, and blessing to him in his walk with you, also to his family. And Heavenly Father, uh, we think of Israel uh, attacked, terrorized. Uh, we thank you. We pray your that you would help them. We pray for your protection for them. And we thank you for the caution which they show in uh, uh, striking back against Hamas. And we pray that Hamas would come to know you, Lord, you as Lord and Savior in their lives. And we pray for that same thing for the Jews, that they would come to see you as the Messiah, that you are the chosen one, Lord Jesus, and that you are the one who gives uh, salvation and eternal life. Thank you, God. We pray your help there. Your will be done, God. And also, we pray for uh, this church and this uh, area. We pray, Lord, that we will faithfully love our neighbors uh, with the love you've first given us. We pray that we will love one another with the love you've given to us. And Heavenly Father, we pray that... Uh, 
your gospel will be proclaimed. We pray your blessings upon the Gideons. We pray your blessings upon all the ministries that are uh, proclaiming your word and its truth and purity. Father, you are so good. And we pray for our nation, our nation which is not perfect, but which has so much good in it, God. We pray for our leaders. We pray for President Biden, Vice President Harris. We pray for those who advise them. We pray for the Senate and the House. We pray, Lord God, that the House will be able to get a speaker because they're pretty much paralyzed uh, and our, our government is in that sense of making laws because there is no speaker. I pray you will guide and lead them, Lord, and bring the right person forward. And Heavenly Father, we uh, pray for the Supreme Court justices as well. We pray for all these people, God, in leadership, both also in our local and state uh, federal governments, God. We pray that people who don't know you will come to know you. We pray for um, revival in this nation. We pray that people will come in repentance to you and would have you as Savior and Lord. We pray that they would look to you to see how to live. Not look to culture, but look to your word. We say thank you so much, God, for this opportunity to worship you. Lead and guide us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and sing uh, Holy, Holy, Holy. 134, and let's uh, stand and sing this one. A reverence to him. While Ron's coming up here, I'm going to just take a, have one more prayer here. For God, for uh, my wife, uh, she's, she was doing pretty well, and then she got a, got a migraine this morning, so she's not able to be here. So it happened pretty quick. Let's pray. Lord, just bless Sandy, too. We pray for encouragement and strength for her and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from Isaiah, Isaiah 45, beginning at verse 1, page 516 in your pew hymnal. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, to subdue nations before him, to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. 
I go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honor, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord, there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, men may know that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, there is none other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. And then the New Testament lesson is found in 1 Thessalonians, beginning at verse 1. And that's on page 835 in your pew Bible. <clears throat> page 835, starting at 1-1. One, one. <clears throat> Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessal Thessalonians in God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace and peace to you. Thanksgiving for the Thessal Thessalonians' faith. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, your endurance inspired by hope in your Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. So you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Here ends the readings for today. Okay. Children, come on up. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Glad you're here. I'm going to ask you a couple questions here, and it's going to focus around a Bible verse which we're having. It looks like she wants to come up front here. <laughs> she's just standing. She doesn't uh, walk much, but apparently she's taking a few little steps on furniture. Furniture walking, we call it, right? Well, first of all, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Who does a puppy, think of a little puppy, act like? I have a puppy. Crazy. You did? What? Crazy. Crazy, huh? Well, what, what are they? They're just like all wild kind, aren't they? And they chew on stuff. They're curious. That's what they do. But who eventually do they act like? They like to sniff people. They like to sniff people. Yep. And what else? They do? Uh-huh. But do they act like you, or do they act like something else? Something else. What is that something else? They act like a dog, like the, it's mom and dad, right? Right? So 
That's true. Okay, let's think about kittens. You're kind of getting the idea, aren't you? I have baby kittens you, right now. Yeah? Do the kittens, do they act like the dog? No. Huh. They're nice. They're nice? <laughs> oh, all these babies t- is, is they You don't have a dog, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have baby kittens. The kittens? The kittens, the kittens act like who? A, a they act yeah. like who? They act, they act like the cats, like their parents, right? Kind of like their mom and dad. So like, okay, children. When you see a little baby, when you see a little, little one a little bit older, like this age or whatever. Like 10 months. Like 10 months or something like that. Who, she, she sees this wide open area and wants to go there. Like every little kid wants to do that, right? Every it's day. wide open. We're going to go there. But we're going to get frustrated in between. So like... What do children act like? Uh, they hmm? act like people. They act like people. Or they dad. act like their parents, right? Yeah. yeah. They act like their dad, their mom. That's, it, that's kind of the way it goes, so right? Grandma, what? Their grandma. Like their grandparents, too. Yeah, people that they spend time with, they usually act like, right? Isn't that true? Yeah. Now, that's pretty obvious. But there should be more to it. Are people equal to animals? Which is more important, a cat or a person? A person. Did so you know you you're smarter than most, I shouldn't say most, you're smarter than many people in the world. They might think that a, a bird is equal in value to a human being. Yep. And sometimes it's very evident in their life. But I tell you what, we are different. And we're going to talk about that in the sermon today, but we're different from animals. How are we different? Because animals does not talk. Animals don't talk. They make noises, though, and they kind of understand each other. But you're right. They don't speak in a language like ours, right? I mean, parrots can copy you, but... Yeah, yeah. They don't walk up, they don't walk on four legs. Well, I bet you've walked on four legs. Well, not four legs, but <laughs> on all fours before, right? Knees and hands, right? So... You're right, there's some difference. Parrots can copy our words, but they don't know what they're saying usually. And so we're different. We're different, though. We're made different. We're the pinnacle, the highest point of God's creation. Okay? We're the most important part of God's creation. Well, in a sense, yeah. And so there's differences more that we're going to talk about very soon, and they have to do with being made in the image of God. I'm going to read a verse to you from 1 Thessalonians. And it's... Verses, chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. Listen to this. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of se- severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to the believers. So he says, listen to this. Here it is. Listen close. There's two things. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. And then, so it's not just being like your parents, but we're to be like We're to be imitators of people who are good examples in our life, godly examples, and also God. And then also, then that, when we do that, we become a model for others to look to, too, to imitate, to follow. So isn't that amazing? I think it's pretty amazing. So we're to be like people who set good examples and also to be like God. All right? So come around this way, honey. Let's pray, all right? Heavenly Father, bless these children that they will be uh, like the parents and follow good, godly examples and that they would become a good, godly example to others too. Help us, God, to imitate you, to be like you, and to love like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up. See you. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel today is from Matthew chapter 22. I invite you to follow along in your Bibles or the Pew Bibles. And we begin at verse 15. Matthew 22, 15. Lord, bless our hearing of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 
When the Pharisees went out and laid, there, then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the, cho the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. The gospel of our Lord you may be seated. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your powerful, inspired, inerrant word, and we pray that you would bless us even more in this time as we ponder it. Speak to our hearts, God, that we may be like you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> a certain large beverage company had a very popular beverage in the United States until about six months ago, when it associated itself with a person living a confused and sinful lifestyle. That angered their conservative base, and the company lost sales immediately and continued to do so to this date after six months, consistently losing 30% of the product volume and revenue. The vice president in charge of marketing chose to listen to culture and politics instead of their loyal customer base. They had betrayed their all-American rugged image for some sinful idea, and it seems that they have permanently damaged their image, how people see them, at least in this country. It is interesting that people wanted to destroy the image of Jesus. They wanted to destroy him. But that's why the Pharisees and the Herodians, who were basically enemies to each other, cooperated. We see in Matthew 22. They wanted to destroy Jesus and who he was in the minds of religious leaders, the people in general, and also the Roman government. They didn't care how it happened, but they wanted him destroyed. The Pharisees and Herodians, uh, arch enemies, basically teamed up against this Jesus, and they prepared a foolproof way, they thought, to trap him in his words. They did that by asking a question to Jesus about taxes, of all things, which they were confident he couldn't answer without basically condemning himself one way or the other, whether it would be by Rome who says you have to pay taxes, and they're an occupying force, or to, of course, uh, offend the Jewish leaders, the Jewish people. Looks like he would be like a collaborator with them. Should we pay taxes or not? If he answered no, Rome would come after him. If he answered yes, then the people who are Jewish would be probably greatly offended. Jesus didn't answer yes or no. He asked them for a coin, and he asked them a question. Jesus uh, asking for a coin, it's interesting because if you can kind of picture the scene, you got these people gathered around, these Jewish people and Jewish leaders, and, and he asked them for a coin, and what did they pull out of their pocket? A denarius. And it was a coin that was minted by the Roman government. <laughs> and here they were Jews using Roman money. Very interesting. And he asked the question, whose portrait is this and whose inscription? And they said, Caesar's. That was the leader's name of the occupying Roman leader. And, uh, of course, Caesar wasn't there, but he ruled Rome. And uh, Jesus exposed their hypocrisy just in that very act of asking them to bring a coin out. But that wasn't even mentioned by Jesus though it might have been noticed by others, he had a more important point to make. There are inscriptions uh, 
on our money, aren't there? And there's portraits on our money. Now, ask anyone today whose face and name is on a money, and they may be able to mention who the president is or guess after a couple times, though that doesn't really matter very much. We know whose currency it is. Though one time I stood behind somebody in a fast food lane, this was about 20 years ago, and the guy who was a speaker uh, at the conference as that came and was in front of me in the line. And uh, he said, he said, uh, do you guys take money that they use in Hawaii? <laughs> and they got thrown a little bit and they kind of like, what? Because they never thought of it that way before. But of course, he's referring to dollars. And eventually he made his point, but it's like he's almost trying to embarrass the guy. And I lost a little respect for the teacher at that time. But either way, uh, we know that the portraits of people from our past government are on there, and also that it's U.S. currency. Back to Matthew 22. After they told him it was Caesar's image and inscription of the coin, Jesus answered them. The first half of Jesus' answer was this, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. If the money has their inscription and image on it, then you pay the taxes. And I think as Christians, we need to think of that too. We may not like paying taxes, we may not like uh, d enjoy doing that, but you know what? It's something we're supposed to do. And Jesus, in a sense, says that here too. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give the U.S. government what is the U.S. government's. That's how it works. It kind of demonstrates that we are a citizen of this kingdom on earth in sense of the, uh, the country we live in. That's why we pay taxes. We are a citizen here. But there's another kingdom we belong to, which Jesus points out very clearly in saying the second half of his answer. He says it's so subtle, but yet it's, it's so powerful what he says. He says, and give, basically implied there, and give to God what is God's. In the past, we've often said or quoted a, a verse from, I think it's either Psalm 22 or 24, but 24 or 1, where it says that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. So God actually does own everything, though powers that be can exact taxes. Jesus is asking, whose portrait or image do you have on you? Whose inscription is on you? They knew the answer to that. Every human being bears the image of God. Then God said, from Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. What does God Creating in the image of God mean? What does this mean to be created in the image of God? One thing is, like we get from our context in Genesis, is the whole idea that human beings are to rule, they're to govern, they're to care for creation. In context, it has to do with this subduing the earth. God said, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. That is one of the main differences between human beings and animals. We're to care for, rule over, have dominion, whatever you want to say, to, to care for this creation that God's given us. We're made in God's likeness. That's how we are different than, than the animals. Though some don't understand that, don't know that, and value a snail as important as a human being in a sense. That's why they create, or rather they look at human life so cheaply and disposable. To be created in God's image is to choose between good and evil. Human beings are able to have morals. There is a right and there's a wrong. Animals don't see that. They might be trained to learn you don't do this because you get something happened to you, whatever, you're shocked or who knows what. But in Genesis 2, 5 through 17, we hear this. 
We learn that God puts limits. He puts boundaries in the garden, and that God gave one command to those first human beings, Adam and Eve. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. So being created in the image of God means to rule and govern and care for creation. It means to choose between good and evil. And it also means to have the capacity to love. The capacity to love. God gave us all freedom to choose between good and evil. God does not force us to be good. He gave us freedom to obey, love, and freedom to disobey and rebel. Jesus said to his disciples before he was betrayed, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also ought to love one another. From John 13, 34. And a very common verse mentioned earlier, which they need the Bible. His goal is to put it into every language in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. When people sin, they are owned, in a sense, by the devil. I'm talking people who are not redeemed. Uh, Satan has rule over them because they, like he, disobeyed God and are separated from God's presence. So an unrepentant, unforgiven human being belongs to Satan. Is it possible for someone to own someone else? In a sense, yeah, there's an example of it. But Satan owning those who do not know the Lord. Either we belong to God or we belong to Satan. Though all human beings are affected and, and infected by sin, there is still honest that image of God. And though it be tainted by sin, we see that mentioned in Scripture too. After Adam and Eve's sin, we're kicked out of the garden and so on. Uh, they had children, more children. And it says this uh, in Genesis 9. Basically, it was after the fall, after the worldwide flood, that God spoke to Noah and his family in Genesis 9. He says this, Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. So the image wasn't lost at creation. It's tainted, though. They're still there. The image of God is still upon human beings. It still matters. However, just because someone is made in the image of God does not mean that that person belongs to God or is a child of God. They're still a child of Adam and Eve. God reveals that the human being is a wonderful creation, unlike any other. And God chose to take on human flesh, too. Uh, I still remember the time someone in this congregation said that, but the whole idea that you know, God chose to put his very self into human being, Jesus, and to, to the, you know, at the same time, you know, when Jesus, by his created, God went into him and is him as well as human, human and man at the same, I mean, man and God at the same time. And that's a pretty remarkable thing. And it's an honorable thing to think that God would do that, would come and dwell in a human being and be human. He took on human flesh in the incarnation and born of the Virgin Mary. It is the redeemed and forgiven human being that God, the Holy Spirit, also chooses to live in. You follow me? A redeemed human being has the Holy Spirit living in them, has God living in them. Uh, they're not God, but he's dwelling in them. And that's an amazing, awesome thing. Jesus said, give to God what belongs to God. Give to God what has his image and his inscription on it. We and all people are made in the image of God, and Jesus said we are able to give ourselves to God, you know, because we have his image. So, even greater than this, though, is, you know, image is important. It's important for companies. It's important for uh, businesses, uh, whether a small town or large, you know, whether a Fortune 500 or a local business, maybe selling food. Image is important because if you lose that image, uh, the, how people see you and understand you, then you can lose your business. You can lose your, li your livelihood. But even greater than this is to become a new creation in Christ. God has redeemed those who have received Jesus as Savior and Lord. He has uh, bought them at a price, his own precious blood shed on the cross. 
for all humanity, anyone who would receive it. Everyone doesn't want it. But there are some who want it. We were redeemed, bought back by God. You could say that the debt was paid, uh, the, the ransom was paid, to Satan, you could say, or to death, or to the laws of God, but we're made new in Christ. So as believers in Jesus, life, death, and resurrection, we become a new creation in Christ, and we are born again, not physically, but we're born spiritually. Um, this week I had a, uh, it was a Friday Bible study on the south end of Fargo there with, uh, in a, at an independent living place. There's about 12 people, 11, 12 people who were there, and uh, we were kind of talking about this thing about being a new creation in Christ, yet at the same time, we sometimes sin. And uh, I had, it was a, the struggle that Paul has in Romans when he talks about this, you know, the very good I don't want to do, I end up doing, you know. And uh, he says it's sin that lives in us. And uh, even though, like, we're a new creation in Christ, he says in another place in 2 Corinthians 5, he's, we also struggle with trying to be obedient but even though we sin, yet we know that there's forgiveness in Christ. We don't sin on purpose, hopefully. If we do, we should repent of that. But the whole idea is um, we're still a new creation in Christ, and yet we're sinners at the same time for now while we're on this earth. That's how it works. And it's the only way to make sense of it. But we're redeemed, born again, spiritually, though we're not having all the way arisen. The reason I was telling you this about these, this Bible study was the idea that uh, I said, do any of you still have, do, do any of you still sin? Every single one of them just kind of laughed at me. You know, and I, and I, I thought that they had, I knew that they hadn't arrived, but they knew that they hadn't arrived too. That they were still sinners, yet they also knew there's forgiveness in Christ. Though all human beings are affected and infected by sin, I said that already, didn't I? We're tainted by it, but uh, in, in Christ, there's redemption, there's forgiveness, we're made new. And so the most important thing is when we're a new creation in Christ, wow, that makes a huge difference. How can you give to God what is God's, though? I mean, it's already God's. Obviously, surrendering ourselves. You know, when we surrender, we can because it's the Holy Spirit who's made it possible for us to do it. God's made it possible for us to do it. And we can confess daily, surrender daily, we can confess daily, and the Holy Spirit reveals what we need to confess. And then it reminds us, too, of the grace and amazingness of God when we have admitted our own sins before Him. And, we, and when we're in God's Word daily, too, it's the Holy Spirit who teaches and encourages and sustains us in His Word. Praying, too, speaking and listening to God, these are some of the ways we can give to God what is God's. Well, I mentioned the 2 Corinthians text 5.17 where it says, If anyone is in Christ, he is new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That is even more important than knowing that we're made in the image of God because that means that we can not only, we will live with God, not just be uh, 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 in his image, but we can live with him. He in us and us in him, as Jesus said. Image is very important to the world, but being made in the image of God is more important than be, how people see us in the world. But even more important than that is that we're a new creation in Christ. That's what makes the difference. How marvelous and how good and how great is our God. By grace through faith in Jesus, you and I, sinners, can say that by his grace we are made in his image and we are also new creations in Christ. May we continually live for him. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you so much for your uh, help in our life and our walk with you. Would you continue to remind us that you're with us and that you live in us by your grace, through faith in you. As we pray, amen. I invite you to sing.
Take time to be holy, number 481. Please stand. Would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Hi, I'm Ron. This concludes our service today at Bethany Free Lutheran Church in Abercrombie. Hopefully you've been blessed by what you've heard and seen today. If you have any spiritual needs, you, you're free to contact Pastor Tom at 701-892-4351.